Okay, so first line of defense we call, we consider it to be what? Remember that word I said? Innate. Innate. Meaning? No memory. No memory. And then we can break it into two categories. What, do you remember what the two categories were? Physical and chemical. Physical and chemical. There are three physical you need to know and six chemicals you need to know. But they're not bad. The physical, you should be able to answer questions on this too, because the physical are stuff we learned in the last test. Okay? So what is one of the physical methods in the first line of defense? What is with the I've been saying one over and over yeah. again. The skin. Oh, skin. Yeah. Okay, why would the skin be a good barrier? Because the macrophages can't penetrate it. Well, yeah, kind of. Macro macrophages, we... Or not macrophages. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I meant, uh, what's it called? Bacteria, viruses, pathogens. Micro... I can't microbes, microbes. Yeah. Yeah. That's they the can't, yeah. yes, they can't penetrate it. The reason being, there's something called tight junctions where your epithelial cells are really close together. Okay? Not only that, but the cells, especially my hands right now, they're so dry. Everything's dead on top, right? <laughs> so you have a lot of dead skin cells, you have a lot of layers, and then you're constantly shedding them. Okay? So even if they do make their way through a little bit, you're just going to shut them off. Okay. Another thing is your skin is pretty acidic on the surface, and as sometimes it can be sweaty, it could be oily, right? Which also prevents microbes from living. So skin is the best barrier. We're going to talk about a lot of good barriers, but the skin blocks 99% of all diseases you're exposed to in a day. So you think you get sick a lot? Imagine if you didn't have skin, okay? We'd be dead. Skin is very important, okay? What's in a, does it have memory? No. no, something doesn't float by and land on and be like, oh, I remember you. No, it's just skin. Okay, it's just like a wall. <laughs> okay. What's another one? Mucous membranes. Mucous membranes. Okay, so I prepared you guys a little too much for the last test, but that's not bad, because that makes this easier. What are mucus, where are mucous membranes found? Think back to the portals of entry that started with mucous membranes. Respiratory, gastrointestinal, genital urinary, conjunctiva. Okay, so they're found at all the orifices in my body, all the openings. Okay, what are mucous membranes composed of? Little hairs. Hairs. What are those called? Cilia. Cilia, and then what else? Goblet cells. Goblet cells that produce. I don't remember. Mucus. Okay. So in the mucous membranes we have cilia and we have goblet cells. Goblet cells are what produce the mucus. So let's say, have I, guys, have I told you guys the fun fact yet? This is kind of trippy, listen. You end up eating what you breathe in. Now think about it. Okay, I breathe in something, where do you think it goes? Lungs. To your lungs. If I say I eat something, where do you think it goes? Stomach. To your stomach. So I'm saying Whatever you breathe in, you end up eating. You want to know how that happens? It's true. Okay? What happens is when I breathe something in, not only am I breathing in oxygen, but I'm breathing in a lot of maybe microbes, viruses, bacteria. Okay? They get stuck. So my gala cells and my mucous membranes and my trachea, okay, where the air goes through. The gala cells are producing a bunch of mucus. It's really sticky. It's like honey. Okay? And then the cilia are there, which are these nasty big hairs. Okay? Now what they do is the bacteria gets stuck on it, and then the, it's stuck in the mucus and the cilia kind of wave, I think of like wheat in a field, the specific term is they beat, okay, but I think of it as waving. And so if it gets stuck here, the cilia wave it up and up and up and up. What was that process called? I taught you it in the last test. Mucociliary escalator. Yeah, mucociliary escalator, which sounds like a big word, but it's not bad. Muco. Mucus. Ciliary, cilia. Escalator you get on at the mall, and where does it take you? Up. Up. Okay? <clears throat> so the mucociliary escalator, the microbe gets stuck. The cilia and the mucus from the goblet cells brings it up, up, up. I either cough it out or it goes into my esophagus and I swallow it. Hmm. So, and then it burns in your stomach. Yeah, because then it goes to the gas reducing your stomach. 
So you should be like, why don't we just get rid of our, get rid of it, you know, cough it out. Sometimes you can just swallow it and the gastric juice will digest it anyways. And that's even kind of fun because then we can use all their little building blocks to make our own cells. Which is kind of fun, isn't it? <laughs> so you kind of made a bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. The bacteria <laughs> need, outnumber you 10 to 1 anyways, so. We're all just really gross. Full of bacteria. Do mucous membranes have memory? No. No, they're just there. And last but not least, I do not remember. Normal flora. Normal flora. What's normal flora again? Just the healthy, normal bacteria. Yeah, the bacteria. So when you're born, remember you're sterile, and then you start touching things, you develop normal flora. Those normal flora don't produce the bacteria the enzymes and toxins that other bacteria produce to make you sick. Okay, so they don't make you sick, so what's their purpose? You have, for every one cell you have in your body, you have 10 bacteria. Okay, so there are a ton of them, and I heard someone say once, life would cease to exist without normal flora. So it seems like a pretty big deal. Why? What do they do? Take up space and nutrients. They take up space and nutrients. For what? Well, from what? Transient. The transient flora. So transient flora is a bad bacteria. They want to come in and colonize my body. So they're looking for a parking spot at the grocery store and then food in the grocery store. But what are we doing? The normal flora is taking up all the parking spots and all the food in the grocery store. They're taking up the space and nutrients. So that the transient flora can't come in and colonize, thereby making me sick. What's that competition called? Between the resident or the normal? And transient flora for space and nutrients. Um, Something antagonism. Microbial antagonism. <laughs> so microbial antagonism is a competition between normal and transient flora for space and nutrients. Okay. okay. Do they have memory? No. No, they're just there. Good. Those are the three physical you need to know. Not bad, right? See, this stuff all you learned on the last test. Yeah. Because portals of entry, really, the mucous membranes, the skin, then we talked about normal flora at the beginning. All right, now for the stuff you don't really know, but it's not much worse. There are six chemicals. So, what's one of them? You have six to choose from. Um, stomach juices? Gastric juice. <laughs> What can you tell me about gastric juice? It's very acidic. Yes, it is very acidic. Do you know what gastric juice is composed of? What's in it? Um, pyloric acid. You remember him saying that? So gastric juice has pyloric acid. The way I remember it, which probably won't help you, but it's another fun story. So you got, have you guys heard of Heliobacter pylori? It's a bacteria. It causes ulcers in your stomach. You think, how in the heck can a bacteria cause ulcers in my stomach? Because you have the gastric juice, specifically pyloric acid, Heliobacter pylori. What it does is it has a lot of fimbriae, and it attaches to your stomach, the wall of your stomach, and it produces something that neutralizes the acid around it. It neutralizes the pyloric acid around it. Because otherwise the acid would digest it. And then it forms ulcers, it cr creates ulcers in your stomach because it has the ability to neutralize the pyloric acid, the gastric juice. So it's called Heliobacter pylori. Does that make sense? How does it, how does it, I'm just curious, like how does it make an ulcer then? Because it, it can actually thrive and colonize there. It has other pathogenic effects. But in order to even cause infection there without being digested, it has to neutralize the acid. 